The tank is leaking. It is the worst mistake I ever made. What's up guys, welcome to another aquascaping video. My name is Yuris and I'm in beautiful Riga, Latvia. This is the city where I'm born and in here, in this city, <laughs> I'm gonna escape this private customized aquarium, which you already know by the title or in case you follow me on Instagram. It is about the 2 meters 40 wall mounted aquarium, which is absolutely insane. All the technique will be hidden and I can't wait to show you the details. So let's go to the customer's place. Okay guys, so inside in this beautiful house, behind me you see the aquarium. Down here we have a beautifully built OptiWide glass aquarium, clear seal. I think this is like 15 millimeters OptiWide glass. This aquarium is built by aquarium company Amel. Amel is a German company, they build aquariums for many many years, it's a family business and they are known for building aquariums for Amano, for ADA. The background of the aquarium is like frost film over here and we have holes on this side, holes on this side as well. This is because we're gonna have two filters. And guys, this is the wall where the aquarium will go. Surprise, surprise, it's up here the position and I will show you how we have mounted the, uh, you know, this kind of shelf here. So this one is built into the wall, this one is built into the wall, this one and the other one. We have three channels that kind of go into the wall and in the cabinet over there they come out. So this one will be for the filter connection and this one will be of course closed, that will be a lid. Coming next we're gonna attach the filter to the aquarium through the drilled holes up here. Take the tubing down to the cabinet, attach the filter and stuff and when all the hardware is finished we will do the hardscape inside. Okay guys, so now we are attaching the filter kind of plumbing, I don't know how you call it. We have here everything already pre-drilled. So this goes to the bottom uh, from underneath. It was like a rubber ring over here, you can see the rubber ring, so it seals it from the bottom and also from the top we have this, no, the rubber ring should be inside the aquarium and this one is from underneath, pressing against it and then it seals from the top. So this one goes from the bottom, like this, and this will be screwed from the top. So those things are attached. Uh, next, let's get the filter inside. For well, the filters, you're gonna have two of them. We have the OAS BioMaster 600 thermal filter uh, with a built-in heater. Uh, number one. And this is number two. Shout out to OAS for those great filters. Let's get them inside. Okay, so now let's have a look inside the filter. So this tube here is the pre-filter of the aquarium and this is the built-in heater. And cool thing about this heater is it can be easily replaced just in case if it's broken or anything. And this pre-filter can also be removed, you know, like just to the top without opening the entire filter. Okay, we go further. We have here some filter media. Just let everything out what is inside okay. lots of containers so the one in the bottom we're gonna keep and then we put one sponge on top second sponge on top this sponge we're gonna remove because we need space for something special 
and this special is gonna be the Sikkim Purigan. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Sikkim Purigan is like an absorb band that is like a chemical filtration. It will absorb all the organic waste from the water. And we are going to top the entire thing with some filter wool. A quantity of this should be fine around the Purigan. So we force the water to flow through the pour again. Now this kind of final box goes inside here and we have our special filter material secured, placed in here and then we insert this Okay guys, next we have to attach the aquarium with the filters inside this cabinet and well, there is this gap in between. How we do it? We have holes I showed you before. From here they go inside the cabinet, so we're gonna pull the tubes through those holes. So guys, mission accomplished, we have the tubing go through the wall and this is the answer how the aquarium and the filter in the chamber down here are connected. We have a secret dry chamber in here and there is a third one in here just in case we need maybe, I don't know, like CO2 or whatever, like a power cord to go up there. So everything can be hidden in this cabinet and the aquarium looks like it's floating on the wall and everything is hidden. Okay, to attach the tubing to this kind of joint part underneath the aquarium, we have to make the tubing really soft. For this reason, we need hot water. I'm taking the inner tube. This goes inside hot boiling water for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds. Really soft. And now this should slide easily on top here. Next step is to attach this filter to those tubings. The job with the filter is done. Now we can start scaping the aquarium. So we just unboxed all the driftwood here. We cleaned up the space a little bit. We have lots of small bits in here. Like I said, they're really good for nano aquariums. Uh, lots and lots of really branchy manzanita wood. And this one huge piece of protostone. So all this stuff will go inside the aquarium because I already have an idea with these rocks here. Then we'll try to find the matching driftwood. And we have some La Plata sand, so let's put some La Plata sand inside the aquarium. Usually it is better to pre-wash the sand, but I never do it. I'm a lazy guy and I just put it all inside the aquarium. So this is a pro tool actually for you know just to level out the sand or the soil like the first step I like to use uh, a big ruler or just you know just a little piece of cardboard just to level out the sand have like even level of one centimeter roundabout uh, sand in here. Next step is to get all the hardscape inside start playing with the rocks and this is gonna be like you know a long process so we're gonna kick in the time lapse and I will see you afterwards. <sighs>
Well guys, so it took so long to finish the hardscape so we had to make a break because we lost the daylight and as you can see behind me there is something already inside the curtain, I will show you in a second. And basically, basically we don't had enough daylight so it was darker and darker and because we hadn't, we don't have already the aquarium light here so we had to stop. So we made a break, today is day two. I kind of finished the hardscape and I want to show it to you now. We have a beautiful rock composition uh, that looks like a landscape that goes like over there. The main rock is over here and a small hill is there. So those are Frodo stones that looks like a landscape but it looked a little bit naked without any driftwood inside. So we played around, we had some different uh, driftwood compositions and we decided to go with this one. I call it fantasy style, basically like uh, tree roots coming inside the aquarium from the left side and from the right side framing the aquarium, creating a nice home for the fish. Filling up the aquarium with water. We are using reverse osmosis water. We have a filter downstairs in this house and we have a total of 40 meters of tubing and we just attached it down in the basement and if I open up this tap, our own water is coming out of here. So to fill up the aquarium with our own water, I'm using a little bit of paper towels and I'm gonna place it down here in this corner of the aquarium to soften up the water coming out of the tap, like this. So Okay, this is the moment. When I open it, the water is coming. Oh, the water is coming. Well, <laughs> so guys, 40 meters, they take some time for the water to get in here. And basically, now you know, you can go and have a drink or something and wait for the aquarium to fill up. I'm sorry for the clickbait in the title and the opening scene, but it is just something really stupid that happened to me. And you know, the tank was finished. I went to the beach to record, you know, the outro scene. And when we came back, we saw some water on this shelf. Then we checked the ceiling and a little bit of water was coming through. And I started thinking why it might be the case and I made a really, really stupid mistake. When I attached the plumbing for this aquarium, I put the rubber ring on the top, not under the aquarium. And when you put it on the top, it doesn't seal the screw. So it is just logical that water can go through. So, stupid mistake made. Anyway, I fixed it in a way that, you know, the driftwood was glued, I removed the driftwood, I drained the water, it was just five centimeters, easy done. Now I cleaned the sand out from the plumbings and I'm gonna replace it, just replumb it and then start refilling the aquarium. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a crazy build, the Swall Mount Aquarium, and I'm sorry the light, you know, the profile wasn't attached yet by the time, but I promise I will come back in a couple of months and record an updated version, you know, like an episode about this aquarium, what it looks like with fish and the light, and yeah. I would like you to tell me in the comments down below if you've been team A or team B, if you've been thinking the aquarium will stand on the shelf, like up here on the shelf or on the cabinet down here. So let me know uh, what was your guess from the beginning. And I really hope you enjoyed this episode. So give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel and I'm gonna see you in the next video.